Oh, oh, that's a good boy. Good cascade, huh? Yeah. Hey, you know what? Your people are over there. You don't care? How about you? Do you care? No, you don't care either. Well, again, I still do. Hi, everybody. It's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in Far West Texas with Cascade the Wonder Dog, Sarah the World's Ugliest Chihuahua, and in addition to all the noise from the barnyard animals, we have Mercury the Green Dog, our macaw, sitting right near me, so he's going to put in his two cents worth whether we want it or not. As I said, hey, this is a vlog. It's a vlog for, let's just call it the vlog for March. Now, if you've tuned in here from Keywords, then you're not familiar with the Eco Ranch, or any of us, uh, thank you for tuning in. Please watch some of my other videos, but you might not, um, um, you might not want to follow this because it's kind of updating what's been going on for quite a while, and I've got to talk about something else. Uh, but first of all, I'm in the middle of doing a review. This is a paid review for a company in China that makes a, um, a laser level. Now, I needed a laser level. So I agreed to do the um, review if the laser level worked. It worked, so I'm doing a review, and um, I'll have that out after you see this vlog. Doing the vlog, uh, probably going to do a series on the campground because I think that's more unique and interesting. The reason I haven't done a lot here is if you look around, you can see I'm into traditional training and traditional construction, and. I don't feel I'm good enough to tell you, well, here's how to do this, this, and this. You know, I'm, I'm the guy that can barely hammer a nail straight. So that's why I haven't done a lot. That's one of my excuses. Uh, the other excuse is I just haven't found the time, the uh, worrying, the, like the whole world about the COVID virus. And also this muscular dystrophy that I have, I may have it to a degree. But as it turns out, it seems to be more centered in my left knee, which I've had some problems with. I'm wearing a, a really tight knee brace right now. I'm seeing the doctor next week. It has essentially crippled me. Most people wouldn't be moving with this knee. So the knee is probably the biggest thing. It's affected my attitude, made me angry. You all know what it's like when you have pain. But what we're doing right here, we are standing in the area where our travel trailer used to sit. So if you saw the earlier videos with the travel trailer, it's gone. I'm standing pretty much where the, um, where the kitchen table used to be in it. And um, it's, not only is it gone, it's sold and out of here. And we're turning that money into the new campground bathhouse. But we're also using some of that money here. This is the master suite. Uh, I hate that word, but I actually have to call it a master suite because it's 16 by 32 long. So uh, let me turn you just a touch. Without editing this, we'll turn you just a touch. And so way back here, I have the master bathroom. This is a good size room. Um, you know, I don't have the measurements. We know it's 16 wide, but I believe it's 10. It's 10 by 16. Clawfoot tub going here, a nice pedestal stink going here. A, uh, I think you can see the base for the shower right here, and the toilet here. The toilet is all, it's, it's ready to be flushed. I just haven't plumbed the tank in that end because I'm afraid of dropping something on it and breaking it. That's all in. The plumbing was a nightmare to do just simply because I, I'm, I'm a good plumber, but I don't do plumbing every single day. So we built a PEX manifold here. Uh, again, PEX manifolds like this are like $300 for each manifold. This cost me a total of about 120 and the biggest expense, of course, was the valve. PEX manifold works perfectly, brings the hot water and the cold water in from the utility room and allows me to shut off each individual thing, the toilet, the showers, the sink, and the tub when I get the tub installed. We're not buying the tub right now. Debbie would like it, but we're going to wait on the tub. Over here I have a closet, but Debbie says it's going to be more storage than anything because the turret, which is over here, was always designed to be a 100 square foot master closet. Uh, so this really won't, uh, if it's a closet, it'll be mine, because you know, I'm a man, I get that much space where a woman gets 100 feet and wants more. Anyway, right here is a nice sitting area, and where you are is the, is the actual sleeping area there. 
The steps that Debbie wanted to save, that's a reason for building it up like this, are right here. They're going to get a nice interior French door on them. I've got three nice windows. We are heavy on windows in this construction here because we're out in the desert. We fight the sun all day long. I like the idea of coming into a darker space, a cave-like space. It's not for everybody. Some people would put a lot of windows in. The problem is if you put a lot of windows out here, you've got to use triple pane glass and that price just poof through the roof for the windows. And also it's going to use a lot of electricity. Now we don't pay for our electric, but still we use a lot of it. I've done a few things here that are kind of unique and I'd like to show you a little bit of them. And I'll get behind the camera for um, a minute or two just to show you what I'm doing in here because today I'm working in here all day uh, yet again, but I'm about to run out of lumber. Let me get behind the camera. So I'm going to be taking the last of the twisted icky lumber and putting it up to be our rafters. And I hung the, um, the header board and I hung the, um, uh, the, the joist hangers up there. So we're, I'm putting my rafters up today. Um, I've got a system I'm going to do up here to, to secure them to the wall. I believe I've talked about the wall before, but I'm going to talk about it again just in case. The wall I decided to build, I think you can see it pretty decently here, is a double 2x4 wall. Um, initially we were going to go with a 3 foot thick stone wall which would have allowed thermal transference but no insulation. Um, the condition of my knee slash legs kind of precluded me from doing the double rock wall I could do. So this way what we're going to do is move those rocks in. I'm going to pop them out, move them in, and veneer this wall with rock. Got that all set up. That'll be a separate video. But we're going to veneer it with rock instead of making the wall this thick. What I decided to do then to get a complete thermal barrier, a thermal break, was to go with a double 2x4 wall. So you have a 2x4 wall here. Most people would go with maybe a 2x6 or a 2x8 in this case. I went with a double 2x4 wall. The double 2x4 wall is just a wall here and a wall inside of it with a two inch gap and in that two inch gap I've put uh, styrofoam insulation. Um, there'll be a cut right here because I'm going to walk around. I, I keep forgetting to look at what the um, R factor of that foam is. Okay, I checked it out and, uh, and I'm back. So the R factor on the foam is uh, um, an R10 per inch. We've got two inches so this is R20. R13 here, 13 here so that's R46 on the wall but the important thing here is that this styrofoam panel gives you a complete thermal break so it breaks everything from the outside and the inside probably does a better job than an R46 uh, there were a lot of pros and cons enough that I said let's go ahead and do it and tell the world how it works later so that's what we've done and I have that outside wall yet to do. I've run out of 2x4s, so I have to get more 2x4s in a few days. Now right here, that's just an electrical outlet, right? With the bedroom air conditioner and the sunlight right there. What we've done here, and I mulled over this for a long time, but batteries are so expensive and our batteries haven't lasted us as long as I would have liked them to. So what I've done here is I've taken the plug, and you, we, if you don't know, you can take these plugs, there's tabs over here that you can break the tabs out and make each plug an independent circuit. So what I've done here is the top circuit connects to the normal solar electric of the whole house. Uh, so in the daytime if we need to run the air conditioning, we can run the air conditioning in the daytime just fine. We have plenty of power for that. At night, because we don't have big, uh, huge battery storage, we take the plug and move it from the top to the bottom if we want. Now it, it'll run for a while on the solar but I can't run it all night on solar. But what I can do on those very hot nights that we get maybe 10 of them a summer and it's stretching it to say 10. Plugging it in here this is this wires directly to my uh, dual fuel generator that's in the, um, uh, in the uh, garage. Now the dual fuel generator I, if I put if I put like a gallon of gasoline in it it'll run for about five hours on that gallon of gasoline. Well, we only need air conditioning from dark, which in the summertime, let's call it nine o'clock, uh, nine o'clock to two o'clock, really, so that's five hours. So we can control the air conditioning that way by simply when it runs out of gas, the air conditioner shuts off. 
So I have three air conditioners uh, dedicated to the house. One in this room, one in the guest bedroom, and one's going to go in the kitchen. The rest of the place will stay comfortable. Um, and I know it doesn't sound right to those of you that suffer through high heat and humidity, but out here with low humidity, it's, uh, it's, it's not going to be too bad. So that's one of the innovative things that I did. Uh, it just is, was much cheaper when I looked at it to go with gasoline and a nice generator, which I buy all my generators from Duro Max, not Dura Max, Duro Max. And just look up Duro Max generators and engines. Um, but uh, that was just a better way to go. It, it ends up being cheaper in the long run. I know it's a little higher on our carbon, foot, carbon footprint, but our carbon footprint is so low that I don't think it hurts. Okay, so that's a lot of what I've been doing. I mean, when you think about it, that's an awful lot for a guy that essentially is dragging one leg behind him. But there's been more. There's been a lot of work out in the greenhouse, work out on the campground. I'm going to go and show you that in this next segment. Well guys, it's been a couple of days, changed my shirt to my last non-pink shirt. Um, you know, it's been, I've been really busy and, you know, you've seen it in the fact that there haven't been any videos or even vlogs out here. The truth of the matter is that I guess I didn't realize what a difference, what a change was going to happen in our life with this virus going on right now. For me, for us, all of a sudden, the agricultural section of our, of our life has become very, very important because in order to help the people around here that I want to help, and it's only a few, but if we all help a few, pretty soon everybody is helped. But the demand for making sure that I take care of them in terms of the food I can provide has kind of taken precedence, that along with the construction, and you guys... I'm sorry, but you take a back seat. But anyway, agriculture has taken a very um, important position in our life right now. Eggs are rationed at our local store. I mean, it's unbelievable to me that the supply chain is breaking down, but it's happened. It would have happened in, in a situation like this. It would have happened to some degree, or a greater or a lesser degree, depending on whomever. I was controlling government, so we're not going to get into that, of course, but eggs are rationed at our local store. They went up to $4 a dozen, and they can only, people can only get one dozen at a time. So our eggs became very important to the 20 or so people that were able to buy them every week from us, as well as our fresh produce, the vegetables that we have, which is primarily lettuce right now. Again, the lettuce that they're getting down here in our local store is very bad. They're still not very bad. It isn't good, let's put it that way. It's not very bad. And up in um, Alpine, it's okay. The price is up. So I've been worrying about that and worrying about how I can move the agricultural production here to be helpful over the next few months, the short term. And of course that's hard when you're dealing with living things that take a month or more to grow sometimes. But, here's what we have done. I've, um, I've cleaned out the radish patch over here. I'm about to put more tomatoes in here because, well, t tomatoes, it's, it's an excellent uh, fruit, uh, vegetable fruit, whatever you want to call it. We know it's a fruit. But it's an excellent product for people to have to eat. So I've got, I'm putting, creating this into a tomato patch. I've got the other tomato patch replanted. We didn't do so well with the tomatoes in the float beds. So the float bed, I'm putting all fast growing things like lettuces, there's a little bit of kale in there, a lot of bok choy, uh, some Swiss chard, although I think the heat seems to be bothering the Swiss chard a bit. So, uh, and I've got um, onions and potatoes. The big thing was I had to clean out, I cleaned out like 90% of the Kang Kong out of here and as much of the um, uh, Chinese uh, celery as I could, water celery, because the fish are about that big now. That's a pretty good sized tilapia. And what they're doing is just what I want them to do. The temperature's right, it's running in this from the high 70s into the, well, high 70s to high 80s. So the tilapia are in here and they're starting to breed, which will give me fry that will end up in the big tank for us to eat. And that's again another food source. So I cleaned out as much of the Kang Kong as I could. It'll be back in three weeks. But um, let those fish 
breed, get the eggs hatched, get the fry out, and then they'll have a place to hide in the Kang Kong. Then I can harvest these in here. I have about 250 in here that are about that big right now, so we've got to get them up to there, which will happen in two months, maybe three, but two months. Uh, another food supply. Unfortunately, we all have to think about, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> dust, not COVID. But um, we all have to worry about how are we going to progress, you know, play the long game three or four months down the road. So that's what we're doing here. Another reason why things have been so um, uh, quiet from, from Debbie and I. It's not that we're giving up, it's just that I've had so much to do. I had an awful issue with water on the knee again and couldn't get into the doctor fast enough and it's working itself out. I'm still going to the doctor to get it looked at. And that's kind of scary to go into the hospital when you're healthy even though we don't have much of a problem down here. Now the other thing I'm doing is it's May 1st right now. That's how long I've been doing this, this video, this vlog. It's May 1st. The campground is open as of today. I have no reservations, but the campground is open. I have to finish a campground. I'm going to go back out there and finish this video. It'll only be another minute or so. Okay, so I thought I'd end up out here. I believe this is where I started. It's been, it's been a while. Um, we got our federal relief money uh, so we can breathe a little bit easier. One of the things we did with it uh, was bought a refrigerator that we desperately needed because we've been running for five years off of two what I call beer fridges or dormitory fridges ever since our big fridge died because I just didn't didn't want to direct the money to it. So anyway, we bought that uh, and also um, getting 200k fixed. Uh, we had some front end issues, maybe a clutch. We don't know about that just yet. So why it's out getting fixed, I'm doing the things I have building materials for. Then as soon as it's fixed, I pick up the refrigerator and a bunch of building materials from Home Depot. I always say Lowe's, but we're going to Home Depot this time just because they had the best price on the, uh, <clears throat> on the refrigerator. But I'm going to go and pick up the rest of the lumber to finish the bedroom and to finish out here. And that's what I wanted to show you. I mentioned that the campground was open again, and it is, but there's no toilet. So as soon as I get the lumber in and get um, and start working, as soon as I get a reservation, actually, we're going to finish the shower, which is underneath the water tower. One of the toilets, I don't know if you can see the two, um, the two closet flanges there, but um, one of the toilets and the sink. We'll at least get that done right away possibly get to the kitchen and the second bathroom. Um, the second toilet's not as important as getting the first toilet and the shower in though. And then the last thing we're going to do is what's unfinished over here, which is the, uh, the two little rental cabins. Um, but we'll at least get that going so we can host campers. Even you, if you guys want to get away, you don't like where the way things are where you live and you want to come out here, come on out here. Make sure you have money to buy at least your own food. Um, we'll worry about the camping charge as you can afford it or not but if you want to come out here and you're what you watch this come out here camp we got about 30 sites and um, if you don't pay you might want to help me finish this up so there's a kitchen and a bathroom I don't know the biggest expense I've had that I just it just shocked me folks the last time I bought insulation was under well was when President Obama um, was in office and he had I forget what they called it but anyway we had uh, there was a subsidy on insulation. That was the last time I bought insulation. I can't believe how much it's going to cost me to insulate the structure, the bedroom, and the living room. The two of them combined are almost $2,700 of insulation. I didn't budget for that, so um, hey, that's a good thing to donate to us is insulation. So if you come out here, pack your truck or your car full of as much insulation as you carry. I'm trying to put R49 in there, but we can take R13 and stack it up. We've got enough room for R70 in that in uh, that building uh, that was a shock to me so even though we got that stimulus money it wasn't twenty seven hundred dollars worth and I had to put it other places like we did need that refrigerator anyhow I know you all have got the same have got your own problems so let's solve our problems first and worry about donating to those that maybe aren't as needy as um, as others and donate to the people that need it people that need food people that need help shelter let's get through this thing together and let's get through this thing the way my parents did it and my grandparents did it through the Great Depression of 1900, Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, the Great Depression, the Dust Bowl, Korea.
Let's get through it by pulling together as Americans instead of pulling apart as conservatives, liberals, and jackasses. Let's pull together. And with that, I'll see you in a video very shortly about, um, I don't know, we'll figure that out in a bit. At any rate, from out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in Far West Texas, it's Robert Earl saying, please be safe and we'll see you later.